September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Suicide is one of the le leading causes of death among young people, and it is devastating our veteran population, as one-fourth of all suicides are that of veterans. Just this summer, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline was changed from the 10-digit number mm -hmm. to just three numbers, 988. And our next guest was an integral part in that change. Kristen Christie lost her first husband, a war veteran, to suicide. and really has mm -hmm. had quite the ripple effect throughout your family. We're so glad you're here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. First, July 988 change. I know you were oh. advocating for that for so long. Yes, uh, since 2017, I just felt like there was a barrier to reaching the help that we needed. It's hard to memorize a 10 digit mm -hmm. number and mm -hmm. with smartphones now, not many of Nobody us remember. Knows we don't, no. Exactly, exactly. But people don't have it in their phone either. Um, and just, we call 911 for a medical emergency. Why couldn't we have a three digit number for a mental health emergency? And so 2017, I started advocating for it. And uh, in 2020, it finally passed the House, the Senate, and was signed as an executive Amazing. order. Wow. And in July, it went na nationwide. Wow. Um, I want to thank you for being here and sharing your story with us. I'm sure thank it's not you. an easy story to tell. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it and, and why you feel like it is your purpose to share this? A absolutely. I found my purpose and unfortunately our family went through a really tough time uh, mm -hmm. for me to find that purpose to uh, in 2008 my, my first husband um, took his life. He was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force Reserve, full-time reserve. And our boys were 12 and 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. Don had uh, been on a deployment to Baghdad four years earlier. And when he came back, things were different. And, and our marriage was a disaster. And then our family was even further devastated when he chose to take his life mm -hmm. in 2008. So 14 years ago, um, again, our, our children, Ryan, he was 14, Ben was 12 when Don made his choice. And I remember that night, um, the boys posed a question to me that I still don't have an answer to, and that's why didn't he love us enough? Mm -hmm. um, no matter how many, he, he left seven suicide notes. Wow. And wow. not a single question that we had, or the boys had, uh, was answered in those mm -hmm. notes. And so, They've had to live with that. Uh, my oldest son, Ryan, um, September 20th of 2015 was the last time I saw him. Mm. He's disappeared. We have private eyes looking for him, any, any just small hint of where he may be. Ben attempted suicide. Statistics mm. uh, indicates that if someone loses someone to suicide, they are more likely to attempt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our children both attempted. We were part of that. Wow. But there is hope. I'm here to tell people mm -hmm. there's hope. It, there, there's hope in our community. There's hope in our future. Um, if you're thinking about that choice, hold on to something. Hope stands for hold on pain eases. Mm. We have resources. I say there's so many resources out there, and thankfully this is becoming less of a taboo topic, mental right. health, right? Yes. And you now speak and share your story and teach resilience. Yes. Why is that so important? I, I think for all of us, resilience, it, it, discounting COVID, right? Even if we mm -hmm. hadn't had COVID, having resilient skills, they're skills, they're, they're things that we learn and we master. We aren't necessarily born with resilience. We master those, but I think the more that we can overcome those small obstacles, you know, someone cutting you off on, on the, you know, <laughs> right, on the bridge right, or, yeah. right. or um, getting a flat tower, tire, or, I mean, you name whatever adversity, right? And it's not a matter of comparing adversities. We all go through a 10 out of 10 on the pain scale. But when mm -hmm. we can come together, we don't go through it alone. We come together as a community and help each other out to tutor each other in those resilience skills, mm -hmm. right? I, I've learned some really tough resilience lessons and I want to tutor other people. I want to be an emotional support human mm. for Not those in my community. So like maybe they don't it. have to learn those hard lessons like 
like I did and yeah. like my children did. Yeah. And there's healing when I get a chance to tell our story. Yes. And for you for to be able to say that after all you've gone through, yeah. right? We can take yeah. your story and say, look, you can get to the other yep. side. Yeah. Yep. But, Thank you. But I didn't do it alone because mm. there were days where I didn't want to get out of bed. Mm. Well, Kristen, your story is incredible. Your resilience is incredible. Thank is there anything you. else you want to add uh, for our viewers before we go? Yeah, I think every day is Resilience Day, but I am advocating for March 4th to be National Resilience Day. We march mm -hmm. forth and conquer our insecurities and our disappointments and our adversities. And um, one more thing, mm -hmm. Ryan, if you're out there, I love you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for, for the you. opportunity. Mm -hmm. thank Absolutely. You. And if you or someone you know needs help, please call or text, right? Yes. The Suicide mm -hmm. and Crisis Lifeline by dialing or texting 988.